Oh, there's Bill. <laughs> you can turn on your um, camera, Bill, if it works. Good morning, everybody. Let me see if Bill, there's Bill. <laughs> you can turn on your um, camera, Bill, if it works. Can you say something so we know you're there? And um, does everybody hear us okay? Put a thumbs up into the chat if you can hear us okay. Great, Ivor, thank you. So welcome to this morning's talk. I'm sitting on the collage just to remind you that this is yet another um, very interesting experience in the Second Life MOOC here on WizIQ and in um, Second Life and on the Moodle platform. Um, and there's Tom. Good morning, Tom. If you can put in the chat where you're all from, that would be fantastic. Bill, do you have do you have um, a working video or no? Let me take a look. I see your audio and video as uh, grayed out, Bill. <clears throat> so, have you been able to set them up? It looks like it's trying to show you. And Bill and I are actually from the same neck of the woods. We're from Raleigh, North Carolina. That's Bill. And I'm from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, which is not very far away from Raleigh. So you can see Bill is certified in virtual worlds from the University of Washington. And our talk today is going to be called which world are you? And Agile Bill is a very interesting guy, very much involved. Um, I met him in ISTE and VISTE, and um, when he was in, uh, the first time I met him in Second Life, my husband actually was coming into uh, Second Life, and Agile Bill gave him a yellow hard hat, which I don't think his avatar has ever been without for more than about five minutes at a time. So that was a really good thing. But let's see, he's trying to get back on again. This is so terrible. He was really excited about this talk. He's a really um, knowledgeable guy about um, virtual world education and has been involved for many, many years. He's kind of famous in the um, International Society for Technology and Education groups um, for his expertise and for his use of, of uh, Second Life in his teaching. I uh, they are having a swimming pool and they have oh, this is a Latino. I have two computers. So it's a Hello. Oh, I know, however. Yay, Bill. Hi. Nice to see you. See if that helps. Oh, it's great to see you. This wonderful Bill, this is fantastic. Great. I like to make a grand entrance. You know, I was here an hour early and then I hit uh, something you didn't like and at, like hard crash reboot. So. <laughs> oh no. Well, I'm I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Um, and are we going to be all the time in the Wiz IQ, or are we going to go out you know, to Second Life? I'm going to give you the best of both. We'll give you some slides today in Wiz IQ, okay. so it's nice and consistent. And we have a MOOC that's part of the okay. uh, VWBPE where we go in live to Sokoko, Kitely, a live Engage, and Jive. So we're going to do that on the 22nd wow. of April and the 29th of April and May oh. 6th. So you can get the both. Ah. So. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So just give me the details. Well, I I'm gonna. Okay. So I'm leaving. <laughs> Not totally. Just just getting my face out of the way. So if you would tell everybody a little bit about yourself and and okay. take it away. Oh, great. Um. So I'm Angela Bill. Um. I'm looking at uh, the next slide here. Slide two. Um. I am. Uh, I collect certifications for a hobby. You know, uh, the um, a lot of them are related to project management. But I went to the University of uh, Washington's um, 
certification course in Virtual Worlds. That was a one-year program. And it was so cool. I really enjoyed it, uh, not just for the material, but also for the people. You meet really interesting people. So I went into Virtual Worlds in 2007. I thought, what the heck is this? I don't understand. I don't get it. And I left screaming, never to come back for two years. And in 2009, I, um, I made a job transition uh, without meaning to. <laughs> so I needed a way to teach. I didn't have airplanes anymore. And I landed right in the middle of BWBPE, which is a conference for educators. Conference was free. The, um, I mean, there's no travel cost. So I met like so many PhDs per square meter. I mean, it's really cool. So I was hooked. So since 2009, my goal has been to teach my stuff, but in 3D. Not just to avoid travel, but because I think you can do cooler things with all the tools that you guys build and the settings and things. Um, so I went to the University of Washington. I got their certificate. Uh, that wasn't enough, so I'm going to Boise State to soak up all their coolness, uh, etc. And I've done 3D game labs, so I may admit you there, too. So that's all good stuff. So um, what I don't know, the only thing I don't know is if when I scroll, you scroll. So I'm going to call out some slide numbers on the PDF, the boring slides. So that's what I'm doing here. So looking at the third slide, our agenda today is to tell you about some tools, and then what do you do with the tools? We may have met in Second Life, which is just awesome. I love the platform. Uh, in fact, that's what I love about it. I meet so many cool peeps. But um, there's other virtual world tools available to you. In fact, I know a lot of you guys have probably gone on the diaspora to you know other things, Unity. Good. Thanks, Barry. Uh, and uh, open sim and whatnot. So we're going to take a look at the ones I've looked at. You know, really, I was like slapping my head this morning. If you guys are educators K through 12, the short answer is Minecraft. What world are you? Minecraft. <laughs> you know, okay, World of Warcraft maybe. You know, so if you're dealing with kids K through 12, those are excellent platforms because they're very engaging. They're very cool. You know, heck, I'd use them. Uh, I do adult training, and there's something wrong with adults. Like, they think some, everything has to be serious. So, sadly, um, <laughs> I have to find some more boring things. Uh, anyway, that's why we're talking about this stuff. Yeah, safer for kids is a good cause, too. I mean, you need to look at that. Uh, I love SL. You meet the smartest people there. I met you guys there. Um, you know, I met brilliant people, just really inspiring people. But it's also for entertainment. So you'll meet people when they're in their nutty mode. And, like, that's not going to work for business or kids. Uh, so they don't have that separated sufficiently, uh, even though the technology is good. That, you know, and there's a pricing thing too, right? So we looked at these things, and I stepped back a minute. And I thought to myself, hmm, how do we classify these tools? Like, what are we really after here? Because my competition, frankly, Every day when I teach, my competition is WebEx, right? Google Hangouts. You know, Google Hangouts is pretty good. You know, I could do some nice stuff on Google Hangouts. And uh, you get the pictures, like you see my video. With Google Hangouts, I see like maybe six people's video at the bottom. You know, when you talk, it puts you, you know, makes your picture big. And so that's all great. Um, and it has text chat, voice chat. I can share the screen. You know, I've even shared images in my live virtual world doing that. So why are we any better than Google Hangouts? Or are we? You know, maybe not. So I split up the world into several categories. One is like the old school. You have a telephone. Remember those conference calls? <laughs> you know, with the speaker phone, you can't hear the person in the back of the room, and you don't know who's talking. That's, that's like, I don't even put them in the slide. The second one is screen sharing stuff. And this is really common today for a lot of training programs. Good programs, very solid. Cisco WebEx, GoToMeeting, Adobe Connect, Skype, Uvu. You know, there's a whole bunch that will share your screen. 
one of the ones you might find handy, but that I kind of like, I actually learned it from Pathfinder, John Lester. It's called join.me. Join me. Join.me. This is cheap. Like, you know, I'm really poor, so I go for these cheap things that are good. It actually lets you share control. Not just pushing pixels, but I can give you control of my screen. And so that's kind of neat for some exercises. Google Doc has some fun things too. But that's all one dimensional. Right now, we're using a similar tool. You can see my smiling face. So you know, it gives you a little bit of information to augment the words. But you know you're far away from where I am. I mean, we are not in the same room. I mean, your wall color is a different color than my background. Um, I can't resist. I have to show you. My, <laughs> I've got my bookshelf, which is great. Hello. Hey, books. <laughs> but you know that you're not in that same room. So you have no sense of co-presence. The other thing is my booty is fixed to this chair. So I can share, I can push slides in Sokoko. I can have the webcam. In fact, that's my um, my face there in Sokoko on the bottom. So you get the benefit of the webcam. But I can tell who's presenting and who's speaking, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm loving that. Okay? You know, it may not be your cup of tea. You know, I bet for this crowd, you know, where we came from, we're going to love the avatars. Uh, but... I think in the taxonomy of the world, this is an interesting data point because it's not three-dimensional. But mathematically, it's offering some of the properties that we want. Proximity, co-presence, macro body language, who's in which room. What does that mean when in the breakout room? What does it mean when you're in Coromel Hall, right? Okay, so i show you that one just to kind of make the other ones look different. I'm looking now at slide eight, and um, it is flat, but is it spatial, right? Like, what do I mean by spatial? Spatial means the room is important. And what's really cool is constructivism. What I did here is I mapped my business process. I mapped my lesson onto the stinking floor plan. So if you are teaching project management, in my case, this is the whole class right here on the floor. The blue boxes are for business-facing endeavors. Green is for engineering. You know, I've got the process. I label the rooms. First, you do estimating and planning. Then you have asynchronously to that. You have analysis ongoing. Then you have um, four engineering rooms. I only give you four because I'm teaching you about limit work and progress. Don't juggle too many things. When your team goes into those rooms, I can tell who's collaborating with who, and I name the room based on a, a feature that we're building. So I can tell what you're working on just by what room you're in. I have a breakout room for pair programming, great, you know, focus room, and I have a feedback room. When we're in the feedback room, it's for demos and retrospectives. And, you know, if you get like a a war room with a butcher paper on the wall. And you just leave up there. You have your charts. You just leave them there day to day. That's what Sokoko's like. I can leave a URL on the wall, and it will be there for you, even if I'm not there. So it's persistent. Serendipitous. After this cool meeting, and thank you, uh, Nellie and Nan and everybody, for setting up this SL move. This is awesome. It was like you. Awesome. Thank you. After this meeting, I go, poof. Right? You have to track me down or something, call or, you know, ping me on SO or whatever. Well, <laughs> so, um, so Coco, though, is always up. It's like SO. It's always there. You know, people will go in and out, but the room is a mixer, like a water cooler. You can have those accidental bump into somebody conversations. Sococo is spatial. Sococo, I could design my floor plan. It just happens to be flat. You know, for some people, that kind of works. And if you're a little nervous about buying hair and shoes, eh, you know, something to it. And you have different spaces to jump to different, you know, team rooms and stuff. So I put it in there originally to show you 
the logic of what we're trying to do without the razzle dazzle three D stuff. But it kind of grew on me actually. It's actually kind of useful. So I like it. Sococo. How magical is such? Okay, now, however, I go back to reality and I go to this is a typical meeting. They spent a fair bit of money on an excellent high performance tool called Cisco Telepresence. It is not cheap, it's very high quality. Um, what it is, is I call it Powbat. Uh, plain old webcam, big angle TV. Uh, you know, so some people literally get a big, you know, a cheap now, a big flat panel TVs and a webcam, and that's kind of how they collaborate. Telepresence is really cool, it's really expensive, it integrates with everything, oh my gosh, the sound quality is amazing. The photography, the, the video quality is amazing. But they put these big cameras on the wall, and you know now we're projecting slides, but just a second before I snapped the darn picture, they were projecting India. So we had our teammates in India on these giant webcam screens on the other side of the hall. Well, what's the problem with that? Where's my booty sitting? Right? I'm still fixed into my chair, so I don't get any body, you know, gross motor body language, right? I can't I can't move. We had a guy that was presenting, so he was in the US, so he was sitting in this big room, and he, he went to present uh, to the team and he was facing the Americans and his back <laughs> the India folks saw the back of his head. How do I do how do I move the tables? You know, it's just, uh, so I don't know that that's the answer. It's very intuitive, but it's the wrong thing. It's like crazy, but they won't believe me when I tell them they're crazy. What are you guys doing? It's bad. It's bad, I tell you. You can convince me otherwise, but uh, for me, it's not, it's not, it's not there. Now, what are we looking at? So I'm looking now at slide 10 with the little red board in there. Now, where you guys are happy again, we're talking about a 3D environment. Uh, this is a different one. This is from a, a spin-off phone company called Avaya. This is Avaya Live Engage. Uh, you may have seen Joe Rigsby's stuff on that. But um, now I have a 3D virtual environment. So I don't have to spend the big bucks on the powerful video link. I don't have to spend the bandwidth. I don't have to spend the money on a physical floor space. Now I make the leap a little more and I add the avatars. Now some people are funny about avatars. Some people love them. But we have had you know, professional training classes and facilitation in these environments. And like you get 10 people in the class and these are $1,000 classes. I don't get the money, but <laughs> I go to the class, I pay them. And some people, in the, you maybe get like one or two in the class, they just freak out. They're not into the avatars, and that they wouldn't take the class again. But some people would. Why am I showing you this one? Well, it's uh, high performance, and it runs in a browser, and it's brain dead, business boring. You know, we were talking about shopping in the back channel. You know, I mean, it's kind of fun. Some people don't change their clothes in a virtual world ever. You know, it's typical for the guys, right? They shop once at that, you know. Someone, a friend takes them, makes them shop, and then they leave the same hair and shoes on for about five years. Some people like it, though. I mean, I kind of enjoy that part. I, I have 48,000 things in my inventory. Uh, yeah, it's much, so. Um, in this environment, though, I have a more limited set, and we're all wearing business suits, and it's, so I think that's a good thing uh, for higher ed, adult training, you know, et cetera, et cetera. For the kids, though, give them, you know, a World of Warcraft carrier, character with a two-headed Valerian sword or something. Non-copyright infringing, of course. Oh, Doris beat me 5,000. <laughs> 50,000, sorry. 50,000. 18,000. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah, and I'm not counting my uh, account in OpenSim. Right? It has more inventory. So what do you guys think? 3D, 2D, 1D? How am I doing? They're consumed with laughing at my bad jokes. That's a good sign, I think. Well, I'm going to go on to slide 11, which is a place called Turf. Oh, I've got some applause. Excellent. <laughs> Virtual applause. 
They played the gesture and animation to applaud. Now, if we were in uh, OpenSim, you could actually create in Poser an animation, and you could upload it, and you could play it on your avatar. Is this good enough in WizIQ where you click a mouse button and I see these hands together? Eh, I don't know. Maybe it's less cognitive overload. I don't know. So the next one I want to just show you is called Turf. Turf is cool. It's a thick client. It's an install, but it's written originally uh, for the Mac. And um, I hopped over to my Mac computer when my Windows computer was, like, not happy with me this morning. And um, so some things don't always run on the Mac, but this one is actually written native for the Mac, which is cool. Written in a geeky language, you know, small talk. So what's nice about this one is it's a lot like the standard thing where you have your avatars, the business-looking avatars. You can actually drag a document from your desktop. You drag it onto the wall of the 3D space, plop it on there. And then you have your spreadsheet on the wall, and two people can edit it at the same time. How cool is that? Uh, this is Julie Lemoyne. She's like the CEO of the company, and she was uh, giving some talks about that. Uh, you can actually just put note cards on the wall, notes, and move them around. It's very, you know, it's good performance, you know, reliable, simple, clean looking, professional. You can put video in there. And see those horrible Gumby avatars? You, you can get actual you know, avatars, but those little stick figures, like that blue one, the blue rectangle, that's an avatar. You get choices. On that stick figure looking avatar, you can actually put your webcam. And Julie was telling me that, you know, of course you can put the webcam of the person on the wall, but what's really nice is to put it on their face so when they're moving around, you're tracking their body position and also their, their face. So I'm liking that. So this is what I like. But, you know, it's the problem with the good ones and the tools that are really strong is they're sometimes they're more expensive. So because of the price tag, I call them enterprise, which means it's expensive. So you need to be a, like a school district or something to buy it. But they have a, a discount for educators. So Violite Engage is the same thing. Like it's not as cheap as OpenSim and SL, but it's um, uh, really good. You know, there's a reason it's cost us money because it's very you know, stable, reliable, professional, lots of features, great for pitching slides, and you don't have to upload a texture at a time. So it's optimized for those kind of uses, for business uses, presentations. But it still has a 3D model. And what I like about these is they still let you play. I can upload Collada files into Turf. I can program it in Python. I can uh, use the Unreal Engine to create content for a Violet Engage. Cool stuff. Protosphere is even better. That integrates with Microsoft SharePoint, which you use at work for document sharing. So that is like awesome. And really good breakout rooms and graphics. Runs on the iPad. Oh my gosh, it runs on my iPad. Protosphere, different one, Protosphere. And that's expensive, but it's good. So if you're looking for something really good, you know, uh, and you're working with your your enterprise, your organization, your school, or whatever, those are worth a look. Uh, Tom asked, did you ever try out TV Niana for 3D? I didn't, but it sounds like I should. That sounds good. I have, I do have my Oculus Rift. Different kind of thought. But um, I'll get it out while we're talking. Um. So there's a was it K zero report or something that has that tracks these bazillion worlds. Um, I think there's a few that are really pragmatic for, for some kind of teaching. Hey, thanks to your link, Tom. Um, so keep an eye on the space. Um, the one I'm showing now is Jive. Now, what is Jive? Have you guys heard of the Unity Toolkit? Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's painfully so. Okay, Unity. I did, so Unity is a high-performance engine designed for building games. And the toolkit's free. And the Pro license costs more, but a lot of the features I can live without. And I'm okay. I use the free version, and it's really awesome. Because remember that lag thing, <laughs> the lag concept. That's because in OpenSim and SL, a lot is rendered on the server, which is good because you can blow up the wall and change your environment. But, you know, in this environment I've created here, the, the walls are not changing. So I can dynamically modify something with the script, 
like the texture on the floor or the slides, but I don't need the trees to change. So there's no reason to send that data to every client. So they save a lot on performance. They get rid of, there's no lag in this environment because all they're doing is, you know, just the things that change for the client, everything else is really pretty much the same. They don't have to keep sending data around for that. So, you know, the thing with lag is it slows you down performance when you're in the simulation. This is high performance. This thing, this is the Mars plan of Jive. You can have 100 people in there. Now, the avatars are kind of plain. You can't buy hairs and shoes per se, but it does the job. If you're just you're kind, of, kind of want to convey a message, here you go. So let me show you what I did there. This is a build by me, and I bought this arena thing for $10 off the asset store. So it's not as cheap as Linden, but it's a lot cheaper than building a classroom. There's a coaching uh, thing where you have different stances, they call them. Like sometimes you're the teacher or sometimes a mentor. Sometimes you forget all your domain knowledge, and your job is to be the facilitator. Your job is to help the meeting run. Okay. So you don't want a lot of, you know, you want the students, it's like a constructivist thing, you want the students to come up with a scoop. So we were illustrating this by physically walking. In these classes, in the face-to-face -face version of this class, they literally put blue painter's tape on the floor and they make this point while walking. How's that for your kinetic learners, right? Got some kinetic learners, you know, they're dead. If you put them in a the chair and give them a book, they're in trouble. Let them walk around, their the mind turns on. So I built that, and that's in Jive and Unity. But boy, that's a geeky toolkit. You know, the programming is big boy languages, you know, C, C Sharp, and Python, which is a, you know, um, all cool. But it's, you know, the, the scripting, the building is a little bit more than the simple, quote unquote, simple tools we have in second line. Sorry, I'm looking for my iPad. Um, so that's, that's why I love it and hate it. It's a toolkit. You can do great stuff, but it's a toolkit. You know, so you could probably get a contractor to do some of this for you, but ouch, it's, you know, you're paying money. Now I'm looking at slide 13 where it's, I say build on the fly. The idea there is this is in, uh, it could be OpenSim, but it's, in this case it's SL. I can create something. In fact, what I did is I did a build that has a like a little archway for each world. So I have Sococo over there, and I have the other tools, you know, the other panels, and all this good stuff. So I think that's a neat one um, because of the dynamic nature. That's why I love it so much. You know, turn the wall red, fine. You know, one click, you're there. You want to buy holodeck? <laughs> Ten bucks. You buy the holodeck. Click a button, change your classroom. That's the fourth dimension. Now we're talking about real-time modifying your environment. You want to script it? Right, there's a script. Yeah, we don't, holodecks are awesome. Yeah, we're getting some feedback on that. <laughs> this is like Star Trek, but it's like you can really do it. Click, boom, you're there. So you can script this stuff, you know, you get someone to help you, you know, pay them or um, do it yourself. That's the script to rotate things. So my question is, are you 2D or 3D? What do you guys think? Talk to me. Is Sococo good enough? I know what room you're in. Or do you need the avatar? Do you need that sense of agency? The yellow hat's kind of a branding thing. I saw one of my friends, Scott Ambler, at a conference. He had this like Australian brush hat. I thought, how cool is that? Because you could spot him in the crowd. And sometimes people think the avatars are a little, you know, funny, like they're there for entertainment. And of course, project management, we're all about serious work, right? We don't want any of that fun stuff. So I figured a construction handle that would show that I'm working. I got that at the 3D area when I was building a rock with the 3D area. But now it's a branding thing, so you can spot me easily in the crowd. So flat, spatial, with the avatars. Now I'm adding this other dimension. I can portray my brand. I've got my VWBPE lanyard, you know, right? Got my yellow hat there. 
So now it's more than just what dimension. It's like you want the avatars. I'm looking at slide 16 where this is, we're having a meeting with the University of Washington uh, alumni. Uh, so it's a big mess. It's kind of a lot of noise on there. What I did is I got um, web on a prim. I used the join me program, share my screen, where I was running four virtual worlds at the same time. I was sharing that with these guys in the second line. And what I particularly like about this is the people I find in SL are just so smarter than I am. So I spend as much time as I can trying to learn from them. So you've got an ABD, all but dissertation, a PhD, and then little old me who's you know trying to get his masters to catch up. The other thing that's cool is uh, one guy's got a, um, another account for building for land management, you know, right? One for teaching, one for building, uh, and so you're actually looking at three people there with four avatars. Do you ever want to be in two places at once? <laughs> well, now you can try that on face to face. Yeah, you know, so like, and you get some people, I, I presented some of these environments. I think it was venue gen or turf or something to my team at work. And you should see the look on their face. And then one guy said, well, what value does that add? Another lady said, oh, my kids would like that. You know, these guys are almost as old as I am. So I, I don't, and I don't know the age because most of my friends in SL are 40 something, right? But the kids today, they spend all their time on, you know, digital media, the digital natives. So they might think, oh, you want me to play a game at work? How dare you? But they might say, well, of course. Why wouldn't, why are you giving me PowerPoint or slides when I could be doing this in something more like, you know, The Sims? Yeah. So do you guys know Myers Briggs? My theory is some people are more attuned to the social extrovert aspect, and some people want the data, focus, peace, and quiet. So for me, I like networking. For me, networking with you guys today is as valuable as whatever we're talking about. I forgot, what, what are we talking about? Anyway, <laughs> so being able to watch your names in the back chat and kind of get a feel for where you are and what you're thinking, I love that part. But that's me and that's, I'm built that way. Most people are built differently and they want to show me the data. So when I come in with a picture of a cool looking avatar, they're thinking cognitive overload, why do I care what his hair looks like? Why are the pillars there instead of walls and a cube? What's that tree doing there? And I, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how do we cover that to get everybody in your class happy? This is Kevin Feenan, by the way, did the VWBPE conference. Thank you, it was awesome. So there's an uncanny gap. Have you seen Polar Express? Polar Express is a movie where they had avatars in it, but they were so real life, so lifelike that it was almost kind of, it wasn't spot on looking as a real person, but it made people uncomfortable. It's an uncanny gap. Every Christmas, some people watch it. Yeah. Some environments have better avatars. Some of them have more playing, which gives you better performance. But here, I think SL has it just right, where it's, it lets you be expressive, but it doesn't make it so real that you hit the uncanny gap. I don't know. What do you guys think? Avatars? What if it was 3D without any avatars in there? You know, the reason I love SL so much is there's heroes there, right? There's awesome, awesome people. So at this big conference, we had Gentle Heron transcribing so people that are deaf could hear or they could absorb the keynote presentation. So the lady in the green that's typing, kind of in the middle, that's Gentle Heron, and she's, you know, the lead of the virtual ability community. How cool is that that she's helping the whole community transcribing Phil um, Rosedale, Philip Linden's keynote address? That's just incredible. So virtual heroes, love it. Actually, they're real heroes. They just happen to be in 3D instead of on a telephone call. I meet people like that. I meet people that are as crazy as I am, which is awful. But I also meet good people like Gentle Heron or Kevin Keenan and just amazing or like you guys I mean awesome educators I don't find that anywhere else really open sim so there's a little thing with the land pricing and discounts you know, a sad story but it made people look around you can actually run the same environment so if you want the technical 
piece. I can change the environment. If you want the four-dimensional platform, you can do that kind of for free, right? This stuff is open. Well, what about hosting? You know, you're going to set it up yourself. It takes time. It's better to pay someone. So I like Kitely. There's a bunch. There's Arcadia Grid's good. Spot on 3D is good. Open to blah, blah. But I like Kitely because it looks, it's the same as SL mechanically. But they keep it on Amazon S3 servers. And when I'm not there, it doesn't take any horsepower. When I go in and they boot up the server, I'm there in 30 seconds, and I have like four sims, 100,000 prims, you know, 100 avatars, and it's cheap. It's cheap. So I'm loving Kitely. Uh, the problem is I can't buy as many shoes or as much hair. So the content is improving, and there are some cool things. I bought this amazing oriental dojo, you know, um, Japanese village thing. That's great. But you don't have as much choice in shopping as you do in SL. Yet, I can control the peeps a little better, so you don't get as many nutty people, you know, you can access and limit it, etc. So it's better if you got kids, you know, FERPA, COPA laws, student privacy, etc. But on the other hand, um, I kind of miss my nutty friends and meeting cool people and shopping. What's a teacher to do? For it once, I just put that slide in there to impress you. But I'm just emphasizing the fact that, hey, uh, there's a bunch of different choices you have for different worlds. I like this one. This is slide 21. Why would we do this? I, I totally don't get it. We had a big snowstorm in town one day, and like they had to tell people don't come into work. And there's wrecks, and people died. They got out of the car to help people and got smashed. Why are we doing that? You know, we could have had the same meeting in Sokoko or in... You know, open sim. I, I completely don't understand that burning carbon. I can change, but contrast that PWBPE. One hundred seventy-five people. I felt co-present. I was sitting there, eighteen minute meters from Ebby. the new CEO of Linden Lab, 20 meters from Philip Linden, the previous CEO, 28 meters from Kevin Feenan, the organizer of the conference, and of course in the bleachers were all you guys. I love it. I felt like I was there. We could back chat. Man. And you know, the average trip was $1,500. Okay, you might pick a city for a conference, so maybe 20% of them are there. I don't know how you calculate it, but plus you know, the big thing for me, Getting on the airplane and not being able to open my laptop all the way. So I can't really do any work when that person reclines their seat. Oh, so that's like, you know, you're losing some hours of productivity where you're flying around or, you know, you're in the uh, security line. So 260000 bucks for 165 people, we saved that money just by doing it virtually, right? You're like our move, right, you know? So there's things to look at. You know, it's not a walk in the park. You got firewalls, security. Some of the cost models are different. Some of them are free, but they've spent seventy thousand dollars on building the sim, like the labor to build exactly the simulation training venue you want. But the tool is free, right? Some of them the tools are expensive. You know, they go, you know, a few thousand a year, etc., twelve thousand. So. Is it a thick install? And some people can't install stuff at work. You know, it has to be web served. What tools can you use to build content, program content? How are the avatars? Too much, too little? So um, that's kind of the deal. Um, security, is it encrypted? Does it have to run behind your firewall? And then there's some that are perfectly good. You know, I love Venue Gen because of the gestures. Cloud Party was awesome because it's so easy and web served and they're gone, right? You know, they're too good and someone buys them or, you know, they can't, you know, meet some funding challenge or whatever. So it's a, it's a space. <laughs> good deal. It's a, um, like the Wild West. It's always changing. So if you make an investment in some of these platforms, 
just be prepared to have a backup plan. It's, you know, although Second Life's been there for years and years. It's 2003, right? So those are the tools. What do you do with them? Make Andergods. Like Andergodgy, teaching adults, and gone like Polygon, like the shape. And in what, which of these tools, like why do you want them? Well, you have like a courthouse on slide 27, slide 6. On slide 26, if you're in a courtroom, you know how to behave. And I'll be wrapping up here in five minutes if you're, I know we're getting to that time. But um, the courtroom tells you there's a special social rules by sitting where you're sitting, you're sitting the jury. What if we did this build? This is a build we have at Rockcliffe, uh, the think tank. It's literally underwater. Oh, thanks, Nancy. Um, and it gives you that immersed feeling. You're underwater, different environmental look. And very cl cleverly, what Pamela did is they she made this ring. So to facilitate her meeting, she goes across the ring in order and gives you options to speak or, or have her say what you want to say or voice or chat. So the people in the ring are participating in order. So it's like this cue. They have a ball in the middle to say who's speaking or has a question. But the bleachers, the bleachers behind, the social contract there is they're just observing. They're observers. So you know, I mean, of course, you know I love the sunken temple and the treasure and the statue and the fish that are swimming around. But if you take all the razzle-dazzle away, the um, the topology, like you graphed it with some kind of flowchart modeling language, you've got participants that are ordered, and you've got observers, and, and the, the topology of the room tells you how to run the meeting. So I think that's a brilliant build. I mean, she does cool stuff, and um, that's an example. Have you guys had a meeting at a campfire? There's something about a campfire where we're circled around, and we know from the from our upbringing that we're gathered, we're focused, and we're knights of the round table. It's kind of a pier, we go around and share. So the shape of these rooms tells you a lot. I had a gallery built. This is the thing with the different worlds. You can walk up to Second Life or Open Sim or Violet and Gage or Turf or whatever you want. And you can read about it or maybe you can actually click on it and go there. <laughs> you can actually go it like you step through the portal. Click on it and I give you a URL. Hey, it launches the world. In the center, I have more information about why you need it. Like what, what classes are available in those environments. So the point here is if we replicate an 1800s classroom, put the chairs all facing Sage on stage, and we push slides from the front. How dare we? Like, what the heck? <laughs> you know, we're mild, and that sometimes that's the room you want. That's the Andragon you want. But I would say, you know, you're free. You don't have to pay $500,000 to refit your training center in face-to-face -face life. You're free to build anything you want and learn from failure and make something cool. Make something that conveys the message, helps you convey the message. So what tool do you use to do that, right? That's your choices. The other aspect is machinima, which is a fancy word to say video. If you're projecting a webinar, some of them are tough. Like if the mouth isn't moving in the avatar, that's really tough to watch those kind of videos. But some of them do, and some of them have, lets you build a cool set. Uh, so I have this uh, distributed conference I did in 2012. I did videos, and you can see the point of the conference was to show lots of the different worlds. You know, Pathfinders was particularly good on Jive. They're all different. They're all good. Which one do you want? Which one do you, know, you think is interesting? Yeah, the video piece. And that's 4D. It's time, right? So the bottom line, I like to end on time. I've got 45 seconds. <laughs> I extended it, of course, to make you suffer longer. Bottom line, I said great things about Sokoko, a Violet Engage, Turf, you know, Jive. Blah, blah, right? Bottom line is, I met you guys, I heard it in Second Life. I come home to Second Life for cool peeps. I was really pleased and touched when I had um, Philip Rosedale, Philip Linden, addressing the conference for educators. He was like the CEO of SL, physics geek, oh, cool, has his own company again. 
My teacher from the University of Washington, the really you know old-fashioned sweater cardigan. He's too small for you to see, but in the bottom left, very bottom left, looks like he's typing. That's Rand Henricks, my teacher from the University of Washington. So that's three thousand miles apart, sitting here. I think I'm together, and these are like the coolest kids on the planet. I haven't found that anywhere else. And following a forum thread isn't doing it for me as much as this is. That's what I got for you. Uh, we've got some books. Um, my favorite is um, Learning in 3D by uh, Carl Kapp and Tony Driscoll. Uh, but there's a bunch there in the bibliography, so read those. Um, you know, feel free to hit me up later. Uh, link to hit me up on LinkedIn is a good way to catch me. And um, on Skype and Twitter, Agile Bill 4D. It's a title I covered up my thing. There's a D, like dimensions. So Agile Bill 4D, like dimensions. Oh. See, I need to click my picture and they moved it back. Darn those slides. Okay. Don't be fooled. Um, but thank you. And of course, uh, some of these words I use are trademarks, so they're companies. And uh, um, this is Creative Commons, our talk today. So thank you so much for coming in. Now I want to answer questions. So if you ran, if you turn into a pumpkin at 1 Eastern, this is a great, graceful way to escape. Uh, but if you have questions, I'd love to hear some questions. I see three clapping symbols from Tom. Thank you, Tom. I'm honored. Actually, we're going to go in world to try these things uh, next Tuesday. So the 22nd, 29th, and 6th, we're going to do the post-BWBPE move, where we actually tour these worlds I talked about today. <laughs> Thanks. The slur all, yeah. So um, we'll have to tweak that or something to get it out. Um, there's a course feed page, so I'll keep watching the forum on this page if you have questions. Yeah, I'm just looking, where can we find this PDF? So um, I would think, I don't know if they have the um, scheme for how to distribute all the slides for the whole MOOC, you know, what Nelly wants to do with that. But you can ping me and I'll send it to you. I'll also put it on SlideShare. So if you find me on Agile Bill 4D or whatever, you find me on SlideShare. It's already out there for you. But ping me if you can't find it. I'll get it to you. Thank you very much. It's been Agile Bill. Let's go 4D. Happy to see you in any world. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. The Oculus, right? Here's the other one. It's the Oculus Rift. So I'm going to put this on. I'll take off my glasses. I guess it could be with glasses. But... So, okay. So that's better. Oh, I feel a little sick. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna love it. But, but. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. This is been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And don't worry, we'll get your PDF up on the courseware page, and I'll get your links out into the. The, Mo the headquarters building for um, the MOOC in Second Life, too. So I wrote you an email in the background. So thank you. Okay, you. good deal. Thank you. And all you have to do to close the course is click that red button up at the top right-hand side. And um, I can't tell you how grateful we are. It's absolutely wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you. Well, I hate to do that. I hate to close the course. <laughs> go ahead. Because um, I think Doris has a question. Yeah, Doris, go for it. Yeah, uh, um, you know, one of the... Major problems that we have when we want to tell new educa I mean, educators uh, what uh, virtual worlds are like. Uh, this is stage fear, you know, that the, at the beginning right now, Nieves, she is an educator from Italy, and <laughs> she's here. And she's like, uh, and Tom, you know, they say, well, this is too much hassle for me. Um, what, could, what can you tell them, you know, so they don't uh, go away to their flat uh, lives? Again. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when I have that mastered, I'll let you know. <laughs> when you figure it out, tell me. But what I do for now is, you know, change is hard. You know, it is it is a different tool, and it is a little um, confusing at first. But like a lot of tools, after we get used to it, we can do a lot of things that give us better productivity at less cost. And you know, the story that I remember is um, we were developing software, 
in the 80s and uh, the, the release manager did not like the mouse. They were not comfortable with the mouse. And we actually had to have one of the senior architects go there and give them lessons on how to use the mouse. And eventually we got used to the PC and the mouse and all that. So it's just like, you know, computer stuff, it changes too fast for us really. But when you get used to it, I promise it's more powerful. And I promise we can make things that are, you know, poorly done in slides and poorly done in 3D. So I admit that we need to make sure we build it properly so you're comfortable when you're in there. A good tool, safe tool, calming build, effective to transmit the information. So, you know, it's worth it. Just an investment like anything else. You know, learn Windows was hard at first. Should we switch from DOS to Windows? Should we switch to the iPad or stick to the laptop? You know, it's not a silver bullet. It's not, you know, I don't know if it's enough to get the job done, but that's what I got so far. <laughs> Great. Anything else? Thank you again so much. Thanks for um, engaging the community and all you do for all your communities. It's, it's really wonderful. Uh, so I'm going to, I hate to do it, I'm going to hit the big red X button to send you on to your day and have a great weekend. See you online.